Hi everyone, my name is Joseph and this is the first in a series of videos uh, where we're going to look at how to get up and running with the Crumble controller. So the Crumble is this little programmable board here. We've got four inputs and outputs where you can connect switches, lights, LEDs. You can connect different types of sensors to these inputs um, and you can actuate servos which are a special kind of motor where you can change position to a particular angle. Uh, so the Crumble also has a built-in motor driver, so you can connect uh, up to two motors directly to the Crumble. You can have buggies, um, wind turbine models, etc. In the next minute or two, we're going to look at all the parts you get in the starter kit, and we're going to connect them together and code a simple flashing light sequence for an emergency vehicle, flashing between red and blue, and it's a really short program. So we'll start by opening our starter kit. and take a look at the basic parts we get inside. So, we've got a battery box, which is important to power the crumble, a micro USB lead um, to plug it into the computer and send the program. And we've got a crumble controller here, and also two sparkles, which are the programmable LEDs. And we've got one bunch of crock leads, which we use to connect all these parts together. Um, and we also get a switch if we want to and use an input. Okay, so that before we get started, we need to go to the website and download the Crumble software. So, I'm going to go to uh, Redfern Electronics, and then if you go to Crumble and Crumble software, you can see that you can download the software for Windows, Mac, or Linux from this website. So if you download it and install it like you would normally, um, the drivers are all inbuilt and everything, so you should just be ready to go once the software is installed. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is unpack the Crumble and Sparkles from their little bag. And there we go. Put that to one side. So, uh, to power the Crumble, we need to connect the battery pack to the plus and minus on the top of the Crumble. So I'm going to take my battery pack here and some crock leads. And connect them. So conventionally, we tend to try and use uh, red wires for plus and black wires for minus. So I'm going to connect a red wire from plus on the battery pack to plus on the crumble. And a black wire from minus on the battery pack to minus on the crumble and then I can get my batteries in to the battery box. Uh, you'll notice on this battery box there's a switch here so we can switch the power on and off and we've also got two lights so there's a, a power light so if I flick the power on you get a green light. Uh, there's also a light called short and um, this battery pack has a safety short circuit in it so if you accidentally short the connections out Instead of getting really hot, that LED there will go red and it will cut power to the crumble. Um, which is really important when you're using this with young kids um, to stop any accidents happening. So once I've connected my battery pack to the crumble, uh, for this experiment, well, <laughs> project, I'm going to connect a sparkle to the crumble. So the sparkles need power too, so I'm going to connect plus and minus from the sparkle to plus and minus on the crumble, and the power from the battery pack will go through the crumble, power the crumble, and then come out and power the sparkle as well. So I'm going to use red for plus again. Um, you don't have to use red, but if you stick to a kind of a system, it means you can more clearly see what you're doing. And black for minus. And we need one extra connection to this LED because it's a, a, a special um, programmable LED, so it needs a data connection. Um, and there's a D written on the bottom of the sparkle here and a D written on the crumble, so I'm going to use a, a green wire um, to connect D from the crumble to D on the sparkle. You'll also notice that there's an arrow on the sparkle, which is the direction the data is going, so you all, always need to connect to the uh, side of the arrow so data is coming in. Um, so that's my basic project set up first. So I'll put that here, and then I'm going to take my USB cable and connect the crumble to the computer.
like so. So I'm now ready to program my um, crumble. Okay, so I've launched the crumble software on my computer. Um, and you can see on the left here, I've got loads of blocks, which are my commands. And I've got a few buttons on the top. Uh, this green one here sends the program to the crumble and this red one stops it. Uh, this one here is an undelete, so if you accidentally delete some blocks, you can rescue them. So my very first program, I'm going to do the simplest thing I can possibly do. So I'm going to grab a program start block. And you always need one of these to tell the crumble where your program is starting. And then I'm going to grab this set sparkle block here. And you can see it says set sparkle zero two, and then there's a red box. Now the red box is the color I want the light to be. So I click on that box, I can change the color. So I'm going to pick a nice greeny color. And sparkle zero is actually the address of the sparkle. So zero is the first sparkle connected to the crumble. I can actually connect more sparkles in a chain to this sparkle, and they'll become one, then two, then three, then four, etc. And you can have them all different colors at different times. So if I turn my battery pack on and then run this program by pressing the play button, you can see the sparkle goes green, as my program told it to. So to build on that, we want to have our flashing red and blue light. So I'll go back to my program. So we've got our simple program that sets the sparkle to green. And now we want to change it to go between red and blue. So first things first, we'll change that green to a nice red. And then we want to wait a period of time. So I'm going to drag a wait block in there. And it says wait one second at the minute. So I want it to be quite a fast flash. So I'm going to go wait 0.5 seconds. And then after 0.5 seconds, I want to change that sparkle. Instead of being red, I would like it to be blue. So if I just test this program now, I can see uh, if I run it, it'll go red and then it will go blue. And then it's it's finished, so it'll just stay there forever. So I'm going to stop that program. And what we want to use now is a construct called a loop, so it can repeat those blocks over and over. So down here, there's a loop called loop forever. If I drag that right to the top of my program and then put my blocks inside, it will now repeat these commands over and over and over and over again. Now, there's a little problem with my program. If I run it now, we can see that it's staying red. And what's actually happening is it's setting it red, waiting half a second, setting it blue, but then immediately going back to the top loop and setting it red again. So we just need to add in one more block, half a second wait again. And if I run that now, we've got our flashing red and blue light. It's that simple. Okay, so now we've got our single sparkle flashing between red and blue. We're going to try and attempt to add the second sparkle in. So as I said before, you can chain sparkles together. So all I need is three more leads. I'm going to use my uh, red lead for the plus again. So plus on the first sparkle on the other side into plus on the second sparkle. And then black lead for negative or minus. So that's the power connected from the first sparkle to the second sparkle. And then I'm going to use another green lead for my data connection. And again, I'm just checking, got the arrow the right way around on the uh, sparkle. <clears throat> okay, so I've got my two sparkles connected. And now if I do a quick program, what I'm going to do is move uh, my existing program just over here for a minute. So I can do a little experiment. So I'm going to so drag a set sparkle block in again, set sparkle zero to red. <clears throat> so let's send that. And the first sparkle in the chain, which is sparkle zero, has gone red as we programmed. And I'm going to add another sparkle block directly under that. <clears throat> I'm going to change that zero to one. So now this sparkle command is addressing the next sparkle. So let's tell that one to be blue. I run this program now. I've got a red light and a blue light. <clears throat> so now what I want to do, I want to do my siren or police lights again, and I want them to alternate. So I'm going to do almost the same program as before, um, but instead of setting one sparkle, I'll set both at the same time. So I add a wait block in again, 0.5 seconds. 
So because there's no weight in between these first two spark commands, you can think of them as happening exactly the same time instantaneously. Um, and then I'm going to do a little trick. I'm going to right click on the first line and say duplicate. And I get a copy of my whole program there. And I can quickly add that underneath. And then I'm going to swap this one, zero to one, and one to a zero. And then put all of that inside a loop. So this is almost the same program we had at the beginning, but I've added in the extra Sparkle 1 commands. And then we'll send that to the crumble. And there we have our alternating lights. Okay, another feature of the crumble is that once it's programmed, you can actually unplug it from the computer. And it's now, it has that program in its brain. So if I turn the, pro the crumble off and turn it on again, it runs the last program you sent. So if this was embedded in a display or a project, um, it will continue to run that program whenever the crumble is turned on. As well as chaining individual sparkles together, which you can do across a display or some kind of model, you can also get um, sparkle buttons where you've got eight sparkles in a row, so you can do gauges and things like that on here. We've got a sparkle matrix, um, which is a five by five grid, so you can do symbols, happy faces, sad faces, arrows, all that kind of thing, and really good for coding challenges as well. And we've got some flexible sparkle strip, which is great for embedding into costumes, even in the school play, and you can do some real cool effects with this one. Okay, so we're going to cover more on um, how to do some cool things with these sparkles in other videos. Um, that's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to look at the motor driver outputs and how we can use those to make simple buggies.